Now we're going to take a look at common methods to recover from faults or errors when working with the FANUC platform. Uh, typically, you would see an automated work cell running in full auto. And when we do that, we have our controller turned to full auto and we have our teach pendant is actually off. And what you'll notice at the top is we have fault indicators that always pop up at the top. You've seen it when we let go of the dead man switch and now you also see it when we're trying to run something in teach mode with programming, but we can't because the, because the teach pendant is off. We can still work the teach pendant, we can still navigate menus, but we can't move the robot. And it's going to give me that error status. So whenever you're running into issues with the robot, definitely make sure to look at your fault indicator and what type of message that you're getting from the, uh, from the top of the teach pendant. So turning it on and then hitting reset will quickly resolve that. But just like again with letting go of the, the dead man switch, we also see a fault and then a servo error, devil, dead man switch released. So that's when I put it in, hit reset. Uh, even if I try to run a program without, it doesn't necessarily have an error in place, but it's not working because I'm not holding down shift. But if I start a program, and I let go of shift, it's gonna tell me the shift button was released while running. So these are just a couple of different things to keep an eye out for when you're working on the teach pendant. You also might be, it's important to note if we can look at our position and we look at what the user frame and tool frame, what they should be, um, we can check to make sure, holding down shift cord, check and make sure we have the right uh, user frame and tool frame in place. But let's go back to our program and see it running in, at, uh, in teach mode, running on our loop. You can see the robot goes over, it picks it up, goes in the exit point, goes past the interference and clearance point, and then sets it back down. We put a loop in here to show if it's an automated system running in. Now, if it was running into a part, we would run into some errors. And I'll show you what that looks like. So I'm going to go back, and I'm going to close my, teach pen, my tool. I'm going to go back to that point. If there was an object there, there's a couple things you might see. Immediately we see two items. You probably saw really quickly there was a disturbance warning that popped up. And you might have heard it, but actually there's a little, uh, there's a little vibro into the teach pendant that buzzes when we run into a disturbance. Now that disturbance turned into a collision detect. So servo 050, collision detect, and it's actually pointing out axis five where it actually noticed where that was happening. The easiest way to get out of this type of predicament is to simply hit reset, go into shift, and jog the robot, make sure it's in teach mode, jog it back from where the robot came. And even while doing that, you notice that I did have another disturbance error pop in. I'll show you again what that looks like on the box in the middle. Sometimes you can save the fault from hitting if it's more of a disturbance error. But if I slowly go down onto the box, now that one we went straight into a collision detect error. Um, but if we go back up, there you see the disturbance that it noticed from axis two. Um, and then even when we open and close it, we still might be able to get that disturbance error coming in. And you can see that pop up. I don't have a full error yet, but it's giving you that warning. If I keep going, might run into uh, some issues. Or you'll see when we crash, again, same collision detect. 
So that's the software that's built into the robot. Again, the easiest way to get out of that is just to go back the way you came. Additionally, there are certain things like dual check safety built in where if right now we have safety parameters built so that the robot doesn't crash into the back of the uh, glass of the cert cart. Or there's also another, uh, there's another safety parameter so that the robot can't go too far high up above the cart. So you're defining where the robot can move to give appropriate safety. Okay. Going back into our program, we're going to loop it. So I'm going to start at the beginning. I hit function abort all. And I'm going to run our program from the beginning. Now, other common errors or faults that might come into place as we're running into a continuous loop system. Parts out of the joint, maybe our fixture got dislocated or we need to move back. Again, you'll see that collision detect come in. And again, we're just going to make sure our teach pendant is on and move out of the way. From there, you can start from where you are at in the, the program, but if you do, unless you're on a different line, it might yell at you for that. But say there's a part that didn't leave the fixture. I'm gonna see that disturbance come into place. So in order to get out of that, hit reset, Z positive. And then right now, my uh, my robot can't complete its function unless that part's removed. I should be able to move forward with the program, lay it down, and then come back. Um, we're going to keep running the loop and say that we run into an issue where uh, we hit the emergency stop, like at the top of the teach pendant. The emergency stop, again, you'll get that servo error coming up. It'll cause you to have to pull the teach the e-stop out, hit reset, and then clear the faults, move forward with the program. Now I run into another issue. You can see it's the same type of collision. Z positive, but you still have to fix the situation. So that might mean to open or close the gripper, remove the parts, and lay it back down. Now, if I was starting on a different line in the program, you will get an error that says, make sure you want to run this program at this time when it's actually at, that, uh, at a different spot. The robot's not currently, if you look at the asterisk that's available, the robot is not currently at the line that I've highlighted here. But that's where it's really helpful to have those labels in place so we know it can go back to a safe point and then come back. Now let's say we run into an error that we might not be totally aware of. And let's say I go down and I pick something up, but my gripper crashes. One of the things, these are pretty easy alarms to recover from, but you definitely might run into other errors or alarms that pop up under this. One of the easiest ways to figure out what is going on with the robot and what is a possible solution is actually to hold down shift and press this button down here that says diagnose slash help. When you hold down shift, hit that button, you'll actually be taken to a menu where it'll give you a list of, of uh, alarm documentation. And here we see um, there was a collision uh, detect. I'll go back and hit that again. Diagnose help. And this is a really nice tool to be able to see that if you see other program errors that you run into on the robot, 
you can actually see the cause and then run into different types of remedies. So for this one with the collision detect, we just need to run through again, but here we have another disturbance. So at some point, you might need to restart the program. It's often much safer, if you can, to restart the program rather than uh, start from the line that you're currently on. So I'm going to drop this, uh, drop that eraser, go back to my program, cursor back to the top, make sure I have resets. Another uh, good practice is to hit function abort all to make sure we're not in the middle of any other program. And then when I move forward with it, we're going to start from the beginning. Now we're doing all of this in teach mode. So it is a little bit different than having the robot running in full auto and then we run into an issue. We have to change the controller uh, back to on and we have to turn the teach pendant back to on in order to jog the robot and solve these, uh, resolve these issues. Now the last thing I'll show you in terms of fault recovery and alarms is you can go into menu and scroll down to alarm and if you just hit enter you'll see an alarm log and this will actually actively tell you there are no active alarms. Um, sometimes there will be a pulse encoder alarm and the easiest thing to do with that is to hold down reschedule or reset the single channel fault. And basically what that does is it clears all of the alarms from each servo axis. So you can also go back and look at history and uh, page down and see the different errors. We've had a lot of disturbances today. Um, we also have an ongoing error that says Ethernet IP adapter error. It's not a fault, it's just telling us that we have not yet set up our Ethernet uh, communication access. So that should be uh, something that's re just regarded as normal if it's not needed. Um, going back to active alarms, you can see, uh, you can go back to history and clear. You can dive in deeper and go to details. So these are all useful tools to try to help troubleshoot and recover from some of these errors. Um, of course, some of the more complex programming ones are to hit shift cord and make sure based off of your documentation that's, at, that's usually at the top of the program, you should be able to see, are we in the right tool frame? Are we in the right user frame? Um, and then also using our fault indicators at the top of the teach pendant.